All right, Shalom Rastafari. I don't know how this is going to work out right here, um, but we're trying another another presentation um, format to pre present um, some necessary ideas. As we mentioned before, and it's concerning um, what's known as the Recovery Bible for those who wish to study more um, from a metaphysical or esoteric perspective. You know, with those who would, would seek to do it. So what we provide in our teachings is some of the basics, the core information, some of the basic ingredients, as well as I like to call it to correct, to explain, to deepen, highlight, or enlighten the word, the half of the story that hasn't been told. So as we've often said, we said bring uh, your, get a pen and a paper, it's good to take notes and bring a willing and a receptive mind that's ready to receive the half of the story that hasn't been told. This is how we like to um, qualify what we're about to bring forward, as well as to get your sacred scripture, the B-I-B-L-E. The Bible is very important, as the Bible also provides much of the core, the core, the basic elements, but it requires that one studies <clears throat> to show themselves approved. So one has to also have other knowledge. His Majesty, Kadamawi Hala Selassie, our, our father, Kedus Abatachin, the father of the Ras Tafarian, faithful Ethiopians and Hebrews. He has also said, um, and some of his selected utterances, such as the one where he speaks on, on religion, he has reminded us about how the spiritual, biblical is our foundation, but that secular information is also very, very important, that it's important to have certain secular information as well. And this this is very true. It's like the Bible. When we look at the B-I-B-L-E, the Bible, um, if you just read it in the context of the translation, without an uh, idea of some of the secular information, such as history, you understand, know, such as history, if I were to say Christ, and one were to look at, for example, these um, two pictures, depends on your knowledge or your ignorance, as it might be, in other words, what you don't know, gnosis is knowledge, and ignosis or ignorance is is not knowing. I would to say, speak about Christ. And I say, well, yes, was Christus or Jesus Christ. And I don't say our black Lord and Savior, qualify like that. But I just say what's, what's in the Bible. We open the Bible and we read it and it says Jesus Christ. Which, um, which one would you, which picture, in other words, which picture would you have in Mind. In other words, which picture comes to mind as being a picture of Jesus Christ? And now people say, well, it doesn't matter what, you know, what color Jesus is. But when you hear that Jesus Christ was a man, you don't think of an invisible man. You think of someone who is someone, is a person, you know, has has height, with death, depth, you know, as far as, you know, has a three-dimensionality of form of person and of being. So it's very deceptive when some people say that, well, it doesn't matter what race Jesus is. Because if you have knowledge, one thing you begin to recognize with knowledge, you begin to recognize that, um, the word seed, when it talks about the seed of David, it is actually speaking of the race of David. And see, with, with that lack of knowledge or ignorance, you end up as the lost sheep have ended up, such as right here, worshiping the Antichrist, worshiping the mark of the beast. Now, it will all come together if one seeks it out, if one seeks a half of the story that hasn't been told. Now, what we want to address right here um, was a matter concerning, um, remember, uh, we just we just had the whole shot in the, and if you follow that particular teaching, we talked about um, how Christ 
came into uh, Jerusalem on the donkey, and we made a comparison to his imperial majesty of the revelation of Ras Tafari. And this is an actual picture right here, and these are some of the um, traditional um, Ethiopian uh, um, Christian images or the indigenous, so we call the, when we say the Ethiopic Jesus and the Ethiopic Mary, these are some of our own indigenous images. And what's so interesting is that normally um, the older pictures of Christ, that from an Ethiopian perspective, tend to be very similar. The, the person, the express image to his imperial majesty, and this is all before the time of his imperial majesty, just in case there are people who have like conspiracy theories that we're just trying to say this or make this up, or these are based on latter day, latter day, um, latter day works. Now, of course, you know this is ancient Egypt, and this is Haru or Horus and the twelve disciples, or some would say that this is a uh, uh, Jesus, Iusus, Jesus Christus, and the twelve disciples as well. So these are some of our. Um, what we call our word pictures presentation because it's a picture a picture communicates a thousand words and with these pictures here hopefully a thousand words can be communicated but now this is also a painting of the coronation of his imperial majesty right here um, being coronated and this is a actual um, painting right here of his imperial majesty Katamawi Haile Selassie now, the importance of his imperial majesty, he's the most important person of, say, the last 2,000 years, but especially of this past century. But most folks know very little to nothing um, about his majesty, and what they usually know has been fed to them through the so-called media, as well as these brothers here. These brothers right here we regard to be our Afro-American um, Hebrews, black Hebrews, the prophet William Saunders Crowdy here, and this is Rabbi Wentworth Arthur Matthews here, and this is the man who actually proclaimed first, look to Africa, this individual right here, look to Africa, where uh, a black man will be crowned king, in him you will find a redeemer. This is Reverend James Morris Webb. And this brother right here on this side with the with the turban on his head is Rabbi Arnold Josiah Josiah Ford. And it's this brother right here who wrote the Ethiopia anthem, at least the Ethiopia anthem for us here in the exiles in the West, which is known more popularly but somewhat somewhat dubiously as the UNIA. Marcus Garvey was given attribution for the anthem that this black Hebrew Israelite brother um, actually uh, penned and wrote. So these two brothers are very important because we can trace from these two brothers our story and also we can see that uh, most have given credit to Marcus Garvey for what these two brothers right here, Brother James uh, Morris Webb and Brother Arnold uh, Josiah um, Ford, Brother James and Brother Josiah, they have contributed much, but they are some unsung, these are some unsung heroes, but they deserve their credit if we are to know the truth the truth, the half of the story that hasn't been told. So I like to conduct an orientation, especially with the brothers who seek discipleship, the brothers and sisters who seek discipleship and orientation so that ones can become better orientated. And this is why we use these particular word pictures. Here's uh, Cesar Borgias on, uh, on your uh, left-hand side, and he's the one who became the, the image for the the white Jesus or the pseudo Christ or the Antichrist, the other Christ, the other Jesus, which Hawariya Alos himself said that if one would come to you and bring another Christ, another Jesus, that ones and ones would accept. And we have this um testimony among so called black folks. This is also part of our 
heritage from Egypt to show that the Hebrews, even in Egypt, were black. Now, why is the blackness so important? Well, the blackness is so important, first of all, because it is the truth and nothing but the truth. That's the first reason, because it's the truth. And because this particular truth has been suppressed with uh, malice of forethought. And therefore, without the truth, there is no salvation, there is no life, there is no light, there is, there is nothing. There is only annihilation without the truth. And this is where humanity is headed right now because of that lack of of the truth. Now, what we're going to look at right here in the next part of this is discipleship and, and utilize this particular um, this particular um, diagram or chart or symbolic logic right here concerning, let us um, close that or delineate that, minimize that. Let's minimize this right here slavery in the South. This is all some of the necessary background that we need to know. Um, who are our forerunners? That's very important there. Um, this is also connecting the mystery, or the mystery from Egypt and uh, Christianity or the Egyptian Christianity right there as well. But we just want to move some of this out the way. Two very important sisters right here. Just give them some FaceTime right here. This is uh, uh, Shaharazad Ali, and this is Dr. Francis Cress Welsing. I often have likened them to uh, uh, Orset and uh, Neptis, Neptet or Neptis, who stand behind the throne of the Black Lord, um, the Black Lord known as Osar or Osiris, for what they have done to help resurrect the black man, the, the true man, the, the, the son of God, again, in this crucifixion state that we are in. Now, let's just clear some of this out here. This is, this is you could tell this is uh, um, being crammed and packed. This fulfills, this shot here fulfills uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68, where it talks about returning into Egypt by way of ships. Because see, the racial identity of the Beta Israel is very, is extremely, is extremely important. We can close this right now. Now let's let's touch on this as we as as we're moving forward. Let's touch on this right here. Um, and the first thing we want to point out is this symbol of the Trinity. As we mentioned before, it would be good for the brothers and sisters who are seriously interested in discipleship to um, go to the Bibles for America dot org. They have a free Bible and this free Bible and hopefully they'll they'll still have this free Bible by the time um, you go there as well. And this particular free Bible is known as let's see can we get a can we get a shot of this? It's known as the Recovery Bible. We have a video where we're gonna show where to go on the internet, this particular recovery Bible. There's also a book by Joel Natan called The Jewish Trinity that's very important because there's a lot of, out there about Trinity and there's a lot of false information because there's a true Trinity and there's a false Trinity as well. It's something that needs to be noted and observed. Now what you see on the right hand side is actually um, the unique uh, symbol of Ketamawi Haile Selassie of Moan Bessazem Negeta Yehuda of Ketamawi Hala Salase. And this is the Trinity symbol that was in Ethiopia, Addis Ababa, for the coronation of his Imperial Majesty. Now we have a couple of other um a couple of other imagery imagery of um the Ethiopic uh Trinity as well. But what we want to do is to get into a teaching right here on how this uh this diagram, this diagram provides a model based on the teaching of the Bible. And we go from Ha, which would be the Ethiopic and the Amharic A, to Le, which would be the Ethiopic or the Amharic B. And then we have Ha, 
or the next ha, which would be C, and then we have meh down here, meh down here, which would be D. And now meh actually is right here, in case you can't see the pointer, meh is right there, this area right here. So it would be one, two, three, four. Four steps. There's four basic steps of um, discipleship. One, two, three, and four. Now, what are these? Now, this comes from an older Ethiopian book that we read some years ago on discipleship. Now, it's it's Bamarinya. It's it's in the it's in them hard. So, if you if you will, we'll we'll try to translate try to translate this for you as well. Now, let's get a pointer or something that we can use. Um, okay, can you see this? Okay, right here. This is ha, ha. Now, now, let's see. How are we doing right there? All right. Okay, ha. Ha, remember it's one, two, then down here, three, four, and we'll... We'll scroll the screen up when we get there. Let's start at ha. Now, Bamarinya in the Mharak, it says, Sawo chin, says, Sawo chin, wada egezi abiher memeles. People, or men, to say people, towards egezi abiher, which is the Ethiopic name for Yahweh, the primordial name of the old hey, wow, hey, which translates roughly to be the sustainer, the sustainer of the light, the sustainer of the nation, the firstborn and chosen, so the sustainer of the light of the firstborn chosen nation. So we just say for short, simply the sustainer. And this name, the Ethiopic name for Yahweh, is the primordial name of Yahweh. Egezi Abher. So so what you know what memeles. People to God or to Yahweh memeles return. This is the repentance. First step is the repentance or the return to God, the return to source. Over here, you, this is le, remember, ha, le, ha, me, or a, b, c, d, so, or one, two, three, four. Now, at the second level, or the b level, bamarinya, the le level, it says, yeah, minanin, men sasawi, hiwet, Manet, the Targum, the translation is of the faithful, of the faithful, the spiritual life of the faithful to be manet, to be built up. Uh, in the King James Bible, if I'm correct, in the King James, remember, we're just given some of the basics. You know, it's the basic, the core information, and, and one's if they want to grow, if they seek to grow, will have to study and show themselves approved. They have to study these things, study what what we're basically giving and build up on it. But we want to provide the core information. It's, it's, there's no easy way, you know, there's no easy road. The right road is the is the way, the truth, and the life, and that is the way, the truth, and the life, and there's no easy road, any other easy road about it, indubitably will come down to a deception. And that's where a lot of like new age folks right now are on the verge of a of a great deception. Because certain, certain basic principles, some core information has not been corrected, has not been explained, has not been deepened, enlightened or highlighted at all. All they're looking for is an easy way out. You have to remember that humanity has gotten in this situation over thousands of years. And although we're in an, what they call an end cycle, you know, the ending and then the beginning, well, we're in an end cycle, and it's not going to take a thousand years for this end cycle to fulfill itself. However, there's no easy, a lot of these other counterfeit so-called spiritual or new age things are just, they sound good, they sound nice, so forth and so on, but they're not dealing with the way, the truth, and the life. It's just a word to the wise, which hopefully should be sufficient. So the first level is repentance. 
And this is why we in our ministry have focused so much on repentance. Uh, re and repentance means return, the returning to source, the returning to God or the return to source. And Christ teaches... Yes, it's Christos, Christ teaches. And see, when we say Christ, many of you all indubitably in your minds, and see, it's, it's not really your fault. It's your fault if you don't want to recognize the fact, but in your minds, when someone says Christ, what image comes to mind? There's a certain image that indubitably will come to mind. It most likely won't be the, the Ethiopic, you mean the Ethiopic Jesus. It, it, it most likely will be the blonde hair and blue eye um, image or the Antichrist, the other Jesus. It most likely will be this particular Jesus or this particular Zeus right here. You see, this, this is the particular Zeus right here. This is the sort of image that most will see in their mind's eye. Even if they know that this image is false, because this is something that has been, this is something that has been um, embedded, even generationally, in the hearts and the minds of people through blood, sweat, and tears to accept this image. Even when we bring forth the evidence that this so-called Jesus is the Antichrist and is basically Satan on the devil, it, it bothers a lot of folks. A lot of folks are terribly bothered by that, um, by that reality. So therefore they say, well, let's not talk about it. But most likely you're not going to see the image on the right in your mind's eye unless you have, have more or less completed at least that process of of transforming your mind and then for, therefore when you see Jesus or you say Jesus or you say Yeshua you don't you no longer see as a as a default the whitewashed blonde hair blue eyed image of the other Jesus of the other Christ or has as the Bible would say of the Antichrist. Now what's very interesting is the Bible itself the Bible, the Bible itself says, and this remember, if if Paul in the Bible, Paul who has written all these the letters and epistles in the Bible, if he and John as well, if they were and Peter, I think also touches on it. If if this speaking about and and John, did we say John as well? Yes, John, Revelation. If they speaking about the Antichrist. That was how long ago? That was what two thousand years ago. So people still, see, this is where they play games with you. They talk about, oh, is this one an Antichrist? That's one an Antichrist? And the Bible already says that there, are pl there were plenty of Antichrists even right then at that time. So this Antichrist was already in the world then, but it would just grow, transform, um, you know, as it has, because there's a lot of different so-called um, images that have come from this particular image right here, the Caesar Bogier's image. So when we're speaking of Christ, and this, like we said, this is not an easy thing to do because it hasn't um, been done easily. This, this is a long, a long running hoax. This is the biggest, this right here is the biggest hoax, perhaps the biggest hoax in human history, even bigger than the flat earth, that the earth is flat or something like that. This is the biggest hoax and joke, you know, in, in human history. And you can see those who are who are the worshipers. It says here, it is the black woman who keeps the whoreship of white standards alive and growing from fashion to religion. Black women fail to lead the race. Now, some would say that we're harsh on black women, but haven't you heard of the black Madonna, the mother of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? See, because we recognize what the black woman, who the black woman really is. And like the Bible says, to whom more is given, more is required. We recognize from, from whence the black woman has 
fallen, as well as the black man. So <laughs> let that be, you know, let that be known, because some would say we're, we're awfully harsh on it, but the truth is the truth. You know what I'm saying? The truth is the truth. So getting back to to this example right here, getting back to this example right here, the first step is repentance. The first step is repentance. Now, if you notice something right here, right here there's an area of the the Selassie or of the Trinity. There's a there's an area right here where there's a blank area right here because there's a there's a gap usually between the Mameles and the Manet. You see there's a gap between Mameles, between return and building up. You know saying like where it says in the Bible to be, um, I exhort you. I exhort, exhort one another. You'll find that in the King James Version of the Bible and exhort and exhortation means building up, building up. This word is, can be technically used as in building a house or constructing. It could also be used in the older is minet, but building up. So the spiritual, menfisawi hiwet, the spiritual life of the mitmanon, and the mitmanon are those who admit or those who have imen or Immun or Amen, who have faith, who have admittance in that which is true, Yeshua Ha Moshiach. Now, so we have the first step is that repentance, that return to God. And then the next step is building up, is the spiritual life. The spiritual life of the faithful must be built up. Now, in most so called counterfeit Christianity that we see and hear about, or you might actually be involved in one of these um, bogus and, and counterfeit demon nominations out there. It's really not your fault. It's your fault if you stay there, knowing the truth. It's not your fault if you just ended up there, you know, and now you say, oh, my God, this is what it is. It is what it is. Now, in most of the counterfeit um, demon nominations that worship this guy, Caesar Borgias. They usually get you to this point right here. They usually get you to this point right here where you have returned to some idea of God. You know, now, now I don't want to make this too deep at this point, but the Bible also says that the God of this world, there's a God that's the God of this world who's the devil. So those who have this image or image like this image of their so called Jesus. They get you to return to God, but even the God that, that, that you're returning to is not the God in truth, but it's the God of the world and the world God. This is why you hear all these religious teachers talk about worldly, worldly, worldly. Everything is worldly, worldly, worldly about this world. You understand? And when you look in the Bible, let's get this right here. What is it, four? Is it four and four? Um, let's see, four and four. Yeah, it's uh, Second Corinthians four and four, where it says, "Well, let's go from verse three. It says, "But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe, or my men do not have amen." and therefore do not have imnet, they, they, they do not accept the objective. You see, the objective faith, the object of their faith is the Antichrist, is the false image. The objective of their faith, faith is not the true Christ. See, the Amen is the objective faith. The imnet is the subjective faith. In other words, what do you have faith on? Who do you have faith in? What do you accept as being true? You see, since the counterfeit, the false image of Caesar Borgias has already been circulated like uh, a plague in the world. One cannot go around and saying it doesn't matter what image or what race Jesus Jesus is. You see, we're, we're, we're well past that particular stage. So it says if our gospel or good news, the good news of the King of Kings and his Christ be hid, right? If the good news of the King of Kings and his Christ be hid, it is hid to them that are, are lost. They're lost already. 
My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That word destroyed, perish, loss, it's all in the Ethiopic. It's all the same. In the Hebraic, it all links with the same idea. To be destroyed, to be perished, to be lost. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. So there's a clear God of this world. And don't be deceived when people say, well, in the English it's a lowercase it's a lowercase g for God. In the Hebrew, there's no uppercase or lowercase. In the Ethiopic, there's no uppercase or lowercase. In the Aramaic and the, you know, we could go, we could go through this all the way back to the the hieroglyphic. There's no uppercase or lowercase. Word, sound, and power. The word is the word. You know, so when people say, well, it's a it's a, it's a lowercase God, not a uppercase God. The screeching owls. It's a lowercase God. It's not an uppercase God. They're just playing with you. They're playing with your ignorance. They're making mockery of you when they say that. They say, see, in the Bible right there, he's, he's right. Second Corinthians 4 and 4 says, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the mind. But you see, it's a lowercase God. It's lowercase G, not an uppercase. They're playing with you. They're playing on your ignorance. Just accent in uh, Greek or in Hebrew or in Amharic, Ethiopic. Is there a difference between the lowercase and the uppercase? See, that's, that's only because they're coming from a European, uh, Greco, and a Roman tradition. That's where we get this nonsense about especially the Roman tradition, the Latin tradition, the uppercase and the lowercase. Did Jesus, did Jesus speak Latin? Only in their Catholic church and only their Jesus, in other words, speaks Latin. Anyway, it goes on to say, least the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine to them, least Christ, least the true Christ, who is the image of God, should shine to them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christos, Christ, Jesus, the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Yeshua's sake, for God who hath commanded the light to shine out of darkness. And there's a great meaning in that, the light to shine out of darkness. Hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. Notice what it says? Of the glory of God in the what? In the face. In the face of Jesus Christ. Now, that idea about the face of God is, is well old. We can go all the way back to the Old Testament. In fact, you know how some people um, would say they want to go see, when they pass away, they like to go see um, who is it, Gabriel at the pearly gates. They want to go see Gabriel at the pearly gates or something to that effect. But even in the Old Testament time, one wanted to see the face of God, the face, the face. And, and this idea of the face, the panim, the panim, like in Penuel, where, where Jacob wrestled with, with the angel until the dawning, until the sun was coming up, that name, Penuel, means also the face of God. So... It's very important to understand that this is not no casual thing. You know, when we're speaking about the face of God or the true image of Yeshua HaMoshiach. But let us move forward. So we just want to put that scripture there. As we said, we're going to give you some of the basics. In fact, let's bring up this newspaper back here. The first proclaimer of Rastafari was not Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey at best was like, was like uh, John the Baptist. It might have begun off with good intention, but later on he showed himself to be a doubter. You understand? To be a doubter. As Christ himself says that he that is least in the kingdom is greater than he. Now, 
This is a very important article that we present right here, and this is all part of basic discipleship. As we're moving into a new, a new Torah, a, a new uh, year script and scripture, and a new Torah, um, the new Torah cycle. It's also very important for us to articulate and bring forward uh, much more clearly what the discipleship is all about. What are some of the basics? Like we said, we're going to give you the core information, the core elements, the core information that ones need. And then from there, from there, ones can go out and search out other, because it's a lot of information. Remember, this is, we're in the time of Donnell's prophecy. And the time of Donnell's prophecy says that they shall go to and fro and knowledge, right? And knowledge shall, and knowledge shall increase. Now, this particular article here, let's let's draw out of the page for a moment. This particular article right here um, is concerning Reverend Webb, the first proclaimer of Rastafari, the first man to say, "Look to," or the first one on record that has said, "Look to Africa." where a black man will be crowned king, in him you will find the Redeemer. And who is this Redeemer? This Redeemer is our kinsman, is our kinsman Redeemer, or Kedemawi Haile Selassie. Now, this particular idea concerning our kinsman, our kinsman Redeemer, it's a Hebraic idea. It's a Hebraic concept. Now, this is a painting that I think is in St. George uh, Church or Georgis George, St. George Church, that depicts the coronation of Haile Selassie, Haile Selassie's coronation. Let's, let's zoom in a little bit on this. That depicts Haile Selassie's coronation in 1930, where 72 nations sent their their heads and representatives, and they bowed and recognized this man as Moa Anbesa Zeima Negeda Yehuda, the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah, Kedamawi Haile Selassie, Haile Selassie the first being interpreted as the power or might of the Holy Trinity, Siyume Egezi Aviher, the elect of God, Negusa Negest Ze Ethiopia, the king of kings of Ethiopia. Now, yes, that brothers, brethren, because some brethren will say Lord of Lords and, and, and other titles, but those were not, the Lord of Lords was not a title that was ascribed to his imperial majesty. We say that as Rastafari because our eyes are open to that mystery, the mystery that, that God, the Father, and the Son is one, and as Christ, the Son came and bore witness of and on behalf of his Father, so did the Father come, our Father, and bear witness on behalf of his Son, or the true gospel, good news, testimony of Yeshua ha Moshia. Now, with that being Said, let's look at this article. Let's look at this article for for a moment. Let's bring this on the side and this particular article right here, where it says that Jesus, that Jesus was a Negro by birth. When is CNN, MSNBC gonna flash news? Jesus was a Negro by birth. Can you imagine? <laughs> Even if it, like, 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 like once we say, even if it is true, some people wouldn't have it. And it is true, but still they won't have it. King Tut was a Negro by birth. You see what they've done even with King Tut's image recently? Though we have living evidence for how he looked, they said we're going to reconstruct to see what he really looked like. No, they're going to re reconstruct to see what they really can make believe he looked like. King Solomon was a Negro by birth. Now, this is a 
article right here from Reverend, J Reverend Webb, James Morris Webb, the first proclaimer of Rastafari, the look to Africa for the crowning of a black king. It says that King Solomon instructed King Hiram to employ black men to work on the temple. The book entitled The Black Man Was the Father of Civilization has the above matter in it, proven by biblical history. Now, this is a reverend. This is back in the 19... Um, 20s and 30s, and we have a host of reverends. In other words,